So hi, welcome to the Good Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with... I'm Aviv. And we're going to ask her some questions today about her new single, Love of Your Life. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to it so far? It's it's been it's been much more than I expected. It's definitely something a different sound than something I'm used to releasing. And yeah, I'm so so happy with everything that's you know come with it. Oh yeah. yeah, awesome. Uh, so, is there any meaning behind the single name or cover art? Oh yeah, for sure. So the single name, "Love of Your Life." Uh, I wanted when people like go on Spotify, like oh, it's like a romantic love song, and then to kind of click on it, and then it kind of be something completely different than what the actual song means as well as the album cover which says love of your life and lucky charms which is supposed to like display the youthfulness and naivety of like what the song is actually about oh yeah i like that (laughs) so can you tell us a little about your writing process for this track Oh, for sure. So love of your life. I went to New York. I was on a business trip. Um, business, that sounds so formal. Uh, I mean, it's a writing trip. And I worked with uh, two lovely writers, part of a band called Michelle. And I went to their apartment and we made this song and it kind of like was done in less than an hour and we just spilled wow. out like everything. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was all of us just kind of reminiscing on like our first relationships, especially like what you know, learning and the process that comes with that. And we just all like, blah, word vomit. Is all of your writing process like that where you're like just word vomit and it's done an hour or is it typically more tedious than that? I don't know if this is a bad thing to say. And like, I hope like, I don't know if this offends songwriters. I feel like if you can't, like if it's not word vomit, Mm -hmm. most of the time it's not going to be like, I don't know that my most success in songs is when like I write them fast and everything just spills out mm-hmm. like songs that are tedious and take lots of time to write the process isn't as enjoyable and I feel like those are the songs that I get less passionate about if that makes sense yeah hey, but then there's like both one times you never know mm-hmm. yeah that's fair yeah you don't want to yeah. think too hard overthink it yeah for sure. mm-hmm. uh, so I want you to tell us your favorite lyric off this track and the meaning behind it Oh my God, my favorite. Honestly, uh, there's one line where I go, you say it's because of my age that I've got it all wrong, but you've spent 17 years all alone. Um, I think that's probably my favorite one because that's the whole time I talk about like being naive and being young. And then I kind of talk about like, that's the first line that I introduced the fact that the boy that I was, you know, in this relationship was actually kind of older than me uh so i don't know i just thought it was really like a a fun unique kind of chill way to display that without it being too you know aggressive or controversial or up there yeah Uh Mm -hmm. Uh, so where was your headspace at while you were writing this track um well i was in new york so i was pretty excited to be in new york um and we i literally sat down and i'm like guys let's write a happy song that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, we had like the deepest conversation before we got into like the songwriting process. So I think we were all kind of in the get to know each other. Oh my gosh, relatable. Let's dive into this. So definitely I was, I was happy to concentrate it to like deep talk mode, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Like I was ready to, to share. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, so how do you recommend your fans to listen to this track for the first time? Should they play in the car with friends? Should they blast at a party? Should they work out to it? What do you personally recommend? Oh my God, definitely not work out to it. <laughs> it's not a workout um, track? Yeah, work at, working out while I... Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, ah, that's a good question. I honestly think probably when like stuck in traffic, driving mm. home, maybe with the windows down. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but definitely alone. Okay. No one else in the car. And again, like I just want it to be that song that like comes um on the radio and then you listen to some lyrics and you're like, oh shit, I relate to that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. That's like that's like my hopes and prayers, but you know. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh so this question should be super, super quick. Off the top of your head, I want you to describe the single for new listeners in three words, no more, no less. Oh my gosh. Ah um youthful, mm-hmm. um, nostalgic, mm-hmm. and reminiscing that's a word yes okay yes right. I, did i do it does that count yeah that counts you did great you did great yes uh, <laughs> so is there a certain feeling or emotion you want the single to invoke in your listeners 
Mm. I don't know if this counts, but like relatable and like they're not the only ones kind of going through this. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, you know, like even if people are naive to what's going on, maybe they can listen to it and be like, oh, that's actually what's going on in my life right now. Mm. Maybe you could like kind of guide a path for people to understand and kind of be them there for themselves more. Okay. Oh, so it's kind of almost like a wake up call for some people. Yeah, I hope so. I hope I my like my biggest goal is for somebody to hear that and be like, oh, this is like a missing answer that I was looking for. So uh, huh, I like that. Cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so what band or artist influence you think you can hear the most on this track, if any? Oh, my gosh. On this track. Mm-hmm. ah that's so hard <laughs> I don't know I try to like that's a good question I'm trying to think about it we used a lot of live instruments and like I really wanted like live drums and live guitar um and that indies 90s vibes I'm a big radio head fan so definitely probably them for inspiration for the live instruments and stuff yeah okay yeah. was Billie Eilish a just an influence because your voice just sounds so familiar it sounds very similar to billy and that just that sold me that is the biggest compliment ever i i love her honestly i'm wouldn't be surprised maybe i listened to her religiously so <laughs> what did you think of her new album by the way just oh drop dead incredible um okay. i oh why do you do you have different thoughts no no, no. Go, <laughs> go go ahead go ahead <laughs> I, I love it. I think my favorite songs would be Haley's Haley Comet. Haley's oh, Comet, mm-hmm. I think is what's called. And she has like the really like rocky one, which is yeah. so cool. Um, I told you, like I love live instruments, and that's always been something I've loved. So definitely that's a great song. I actually have a song that I wrote a really long time ago that kind of like reminds me of it. So it's like nice to see somebody put something like that out. Yeah. What about you? What do you guys think? I'm curious. I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I preferred the first album. Yeah. Uh, well, technically not her first album. The album before, um, When We All Fall Asleep, yeah. Where Do We Go? But I did like um, the title track. That one. Title that track. One yeah. yeah. That one was, it's incredible. Was what about you? What about you, Shane? Not for me. Not for me. <laughs> not oh, for me. wow. I'm like so <laughs> honest. I don't know. I, I, I just find, I think it's really cool when like a mainstream like pop artist doesn't yes. kind of stick with the trends. Mm-hmm. So like even that just for me is like a props to her. And I definitely think like her productions are incredible and her voice is just like one of a kind. So maybe that's why I'm drawn to it. And like lyrics and songwriter. But mm-hmm. okay, that's interesting. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> Fancy. Fair. So what is your favorite memory that you made while creating this track? Oh my gosh. Um, so when I did the production, I was in LA also on this trip with like, and I met with John Luca, who's the guy I produced the song with incredible. Mm -hmm. And after we were done, he drove me home because I was in LA and I'm like this little 15 year old in LA. And he's like, okay, you're not taking an Uber. Let me drive you home. And on the ride, like he just like told me about his life and everything. And he's such a cool, unique guy. So definitely that personal aspect. And even when I was in like New York talking to the songwriters about their personal lives. Just so honestly, just like hearing about people and learning about people. It's always my favorite process. Yeah. yeah that's that's cool. really good. Uh, so picture this, you're on tour, you're at a gas station for a rest stop. What is your snack of choice? Oh, coffee crisp. Easy peasy. Okay. What are those? Is that like a Canadian thing? Wait. I think so. No. <laughs> I've never heard of those. Coffee crisp? Coffee crisp? No. Wait, like a coffee chip? Is coffee crisp Canadian? No, it's like this bar. Oh my God, it's Canadian. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, you are missing out. Coffee crisps are incredible. They're like Kit Kat bars, Mm -hmm. but like coffee flavored. Oh, okay. Is it still like chocolate? Yeah, it's like like the crisp part. It's like, think of it like it kind of tastes like tiramisu in a weird way okay it's very good oh my gosh okay next time you come to canada you have to try this we'll have to make our okay. way over to canada yeah, yeah. <laughs> guys, just fly out just for the coffee crisps All right. exactly <laughs> just after that yeah that's fair uh, <laughs> yeah. so where do you see your project in the next five years whoa ah five years i mean let's first release the ep 
I think that's mm-hmm. the big one. Oh, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that. Yeah, I didn't know. Whatever. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, well. <laughs> Anyways. Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but um, let's first up put the first project. And then after that, kind of go with the flow. But in five years, I love live shows. I definitely want to see a lot of live shows down the road. And I hope that I'm still loving it. And it's a passion because the second, you know, you can get really like involved in the work and the business side of this industry, especially. So I feel like if I am managed to stay like in love with it, then that's like all I need, you know? All right. Mm-hmm. So inspirational. And uh, so if awesome. anyone from your team is watching, we didn't even force you to mention the EP. So <laughs> no. No one put a gun to your I'm head. I think I'm okay. I think I'm allowed to like <laughs> say that it's like coming. I think that's okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, as wow. long as you don't tell any like big details about it, I think we'll be good. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so for the last couple of questions, we're going to shift away from music and go straight to death row. Boom. Oh so my God. No. <laughs> if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? mashed potatoes i love mashed potatoes with gravy and drink sprite okay, mm. Ooh, okay. <laughs> that, that doesn't go together but uh. <laughs> no it's okay though it's your last meal it's your choice it's what about good. you guys i'm curious what do you think what would yours be thai basil tofu with a side of rice and a uh, taro bu- bubble tea oh oh bubble tea yeah that's a good one um, <laughs> what about you? a big bowl of spaghetti and a sprite cranberry <laughs> Love that. <laughs> <laughs> keeping it keeping it comfort food i love that oh yeah <laughs> uh, so if you could live in one fictional world for a week where would you live like like in a book and stuff mm-hmm. like book movie show comic hogwarts easily i really like i'm so into like in another world like i'm a little witch you know <laughs> i'm not one of those like crystal people and like i wish i was and i wish okay. i could, like be cool enough to be like that but in another world definitely like i'd be casting spells and you know stirring some shit up <laughs> what about you guys what house are you oh i don't know i think i'm hufflepuff yeah i thought yeah. so yeah. yeah, it's a good house. I, get, yeah. I, I radiate Hufflepuff energy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I have another asking the last question, and every single person who's spoken to have said that it is the most important question. Oh my God. I'm scared. What's your favorite color? Oh. I don't even know. Like, why do I not know? How to, I why do not all know. The this is the toughest one. I think, I think red. I really, really fuck with red. Red's a okay. nice color. Okay. What about you guys? Black and yellow, black and yellow. Those are two very different colors. Yeah, isn't, isn't black a shade? That doesn't. Oh, that's, God, what that's what I say. That's what I say. That does not count. Yeah, exactly. I told him that. I'm like, you can't pick black because it's a shade. Well, it's <laughs> half my show, so it's my rules, kind of. <laughs> uh, I love that. Out of all of the questions, you were like this, and then the color one. You're like, oh fuck. I'm not really sure. What's that? What's a color? <laughs> um, and so, as I said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Oh, social media. Um, Instagram is it's a vive. Um, Facebook and is it's a vive. Twitter is it's a vive underscore and TikTok is it's a vive with an extra v at the v at the end. Wow, I cannot speak. <laughs> okay, we're we're yeah. struggling too. <laughs> Thanks for having me. You guys are like so fun. This was so awesome. Anytime. Uh, well, thank you for now. That's been Aviv, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast. <laughs>